All right, hi guys, this is uh, topic 8.3 and we're talking about sustainable design. So when we're talking sustainable design, we are designing physical objects and services in accordance with the principles of social, economic, and environmental sustainability. So that's that whole triple bottom line idea from um, topic 8.1. So we're looking at making sure that anything that we, we, we do benefits people, benefits the economy, and benefits the environment or has very low impact on the environment and is sustainable. Um, so, you know, this is just a graphic of sustainable design where we're looking at making sure that the, the raw, ma raw materials that we extract are uh, sustainable, that the manufacturing processes that we use are sustainable, that the part manufacturing, assembly, and product uh, use, and finally the end of life is all sustainable. Now, this is different from green design. So green design is designing in a way that takes into account um, the, uh, the environmental impact of a product throughout its life cycle. So this is, you know, looking at, okay, well, hey, you know, uh, how is the, where do we get the resources, uh, manufacturing, delivery, use, and disposal. And, and green design is good, uh, and, and we should be focused on green design also. But uh, sustainable design is sort of a level up from green design. And in fact, um, when we look at something like green design, we, we might look at something like this. This is uh, just, you know, a, a, you know, the life cycle of an aluminum can. And so it starts with um, um, extracting a non-renewable resource, so something like bauxite. Bauxite is a mineral that contains a lot of aluminum. And then, and then you refine it, you smelt it, you cast it into ingots, which are like bars. You um, fabricate it into sheets. You then manufacture the can, recycle the can, sort them, shred them, remelt them, introduce it back in. But, uh, you know, quite often cans don't get recycled. So, you know, they, they end up in landfill. Um, plus, you know, bauxite is a, um, a non-renewable resource. So it's, you know, we're, we will run out of bauxite at some point. So um, green design would take into account this environmental impact. But sustainable design is looking at something that is, is a little more deep. And from the IBO, they want you to understand the differences between green design and sustainable design. So um, when we're talking about green design, we're looking at products that have a low impact on the environment. So as low as we can possibly get. Um, whereas, you know, when we're talking sustainable design, we're talking about that triple bottom line sustainability. So not only are we looking at the environmental part, but we're looking at the economics because people need to make a profit in order for them to uh, survive. Uh, you also are looking at that social component. And we'll talk about that social component um, a little while later. Uh, when we're talking green design, we're, we're paying attention from cradle to grave, um, whereas we're looking at with sustainable design, cradle to cradle. So in other words, this, this is going through, you know, you're, you're paying attention to the design and the environmental impacts of your design from the extraction of the resources all the way through manufacture to disposal, whereas this is looking from extraction all the way through to recycling and and bringing that back into the system and making sure that when you are actually um, extracting that you're extracting renewable resources as much as possible rather than uh, non-renewable resources. We'll look at an example of that in just a, in a minute or two. Um, green design is shorter as compared to sustainable design. It takes less time to design something with green design ideas. Um, it's easier and cheaper to address environmental concerns in the product. Um, Sustainable design is a longer, longer uh, time scale because it's a it's a radical rethink. It's it's really you know we get down here it's it's really a big change and there needs to be a lot of research and design. That's what R and D stands for, um, and so that increases costs. Um, green design can be improved with you know um, incremental design changes. Um, you know, for instance, rather than if you have a, a plastic component, rather than using um, a plastic that's based on an oil. Um, or petroleum product, you might use a, a bioplastic. So that, that could be an incremental design change that is considered green design. Whereas when you're looking at sustainable design, this is a radical, radical rethink. It's, it's really taking, um, you know, stripping it down, trying to get it as much as possible following these triple bottom um, line sustainability practices. So it's a radical design change rather than just being an incremental change. Here's an example of uh, fairly radical change. Um, so, you know, typically plastics are made out of petroleum. So you need to get your raw materials from petroleum. Um, but when we're talking about bioplastics, and this is an example of, of a more sustainable design, is your the raw material is actually 
um, sugarcane or corn or potatoes, um, some sort of product like that. Um, and that's going to replace the petroleum products. You know, that plant matter is uh, harvested and it's refined, made into plastic, which can be disposed of, composted, and then renewed and sent back into the system. Right? This is more sustainable because you are actually feeding this back in. It's that cradle-to-cradle -cradle idea. Now, I know that uh, I showed an aluminum can um, product life cycle earlier, and, and definitely aluminum cans, if they were all recycled, would be cradle-to-cradle. -cradle. But um, yeah, you're not recycling all of that. Okay, now there's a, a guy named Edwin Dotschewski, and he came up with some five principles of design, and they are cyclic, solar, safe, efficient, and social, and this is something that you uh, need to know about. So uh, let's talk about cyclic. So that means that the product could not only be made from recyclable materials, but also is compostable um, organic materials uh, from minerals that are recycled in a continuous loop, such as bioplastics. So basically, what, what Dostoevsky's um, first principle is, is that you should try as much as possible to be using recycled materials or materials that are cyclic in nature, uh, so bioplastics. Or this is an example of um, uh, steel. This is um, recycled steel. So you would try to use as much as possible in your products recycled materials or something that is compostable and easily, um, you know, that feeds back into that uh, cradle to cradle loop. Um, this is also uh, benefits uh, the environment, right? So when we talk about triple bottom line, the cyclic nature of that is going to benefit the environment. Solar. So what that means is not necessarily solar, but, but basically that the energy that is required to both um, manufacture a product, but also to use a product should be from renewable resources as much as possible. So, you know, um, renewable energy resources could be wind, it could be solar, it could be wave power, it could be um, hydroelectric, whatever. But basically what you shouldn't be using is coal-fired plants to power your, your um, products as much as possible. And, and again, this is these are his five principles, and this benefits the environment of the triple bottom line, right? Okay, let's move on. Safe. So products should be safe. So byproducts that are emitted into the um, uh, environment, so that's air, land, and water, and space are non-hazardous hazardous and non-polluting. polluting. So, you know, an example of this could be like the hydrogen fuel cell cars, which uh, its byproduct is basically water. But you know, there are a lot of products in our homes which emit some nasty byproducts, and they're, they're often called VOCs, which stands for volatile organic compounds. And you would be amazed at the number of areas where we get um, VOCs coming from from our products. Okay, so that that uh, that actually has it's not safe if that makes sense. When you buy a new product or you buy you know that new car smell, that's actually VOCs coming off of the plastic inside the car, and it's actually not very good for you. So you, we want products to be safe, um, and so that's going to also benefit the environment. Efficient, right? So it requires less energy, materials, and water than equivalent products in 1990. So this is uh, also, this is uh, economic. If you think about it, this is uh, you know the the more efficient something is, the less money it costs to run, the the better that it that it is for the environment, and so that makes it more efficient. And uh, and, and companies that that have these efficient products are probably going to make more money than companies that have less efficient products. So this is uh, uh, an example of of the economics of the of the thing. Okay, so we want to make sure that our products that we design are also efficient. Okay, here we go. And then we get to the other part of the triple bottom line, which is the social aspects. And so the products manufacturing usage should underpin basic human rights, safe work practices, fair trade principles, and natural justice. So this is an example of a, a mineral that, that is extracted. It's, it's one of the only places that you can extract it easily on Earth is in uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and it's called coltan. And it, basically, you're going to use this mineral to get some rare earth elements that you need in cell phones and computers and anything with a, an electronic chip. And you can see the, uh, the social impact and the environmental impact of the mining of this particular um, uh, mineral. So these, you know, people will, will labor for a long time, you know, in, in these terrible working conditions and get, you know, pennies on the dollar, like just hardly any money for, for this mineral. 
um, which is then made into consumer electronics, which which actually have a quite a high um, value, right? So basically, they're they're getting very little for their hard work, and they're being treated in ways that which which violates basic human rights and safe work practices, fair trade, and natural justice. I mean, the DRC actually has some of the most. It's one of the most. Um, mineral rich countries in the world and by all rights it should be one of the richest countries in the world but because of um, unfair trade practices and, and uh, human rights violations and uh, you know unsafe working conditions it's, it's, it's one of the poorer countries in the world so we should be aware of that and, and our products should be you know basically using um, product uh, using materials and resources that that take into account human rights safe work practices, fair trade, and natural justice. Okay, And this is, again, one of uh, uh, Dachevsky's five principles of design. And, and it goes with that triple bottom line, again, with the, uh, um, the social aspect. All right, this is uh, Dachevsky, and he's going to explain his, uh, his five principles. So I, I would like you to pause me and go watch him. And uh, I think that's it for today. Thanks, guys.